Hey, what's going on guys? Just wanted to do a video on the stock indicator program that you can run through Excel. Um, this is going to be part of some of the videos I'm going to show you. And in this video, we're going to be showing you how to actually pull the data um, onto another sheet so you can look at everything on one shot. Um, and you can see all your different indications and on all various different stocks, as many stocks as you want. And to view the market more dynamically and to view everything on one screen rather than floating through, you know, multiple different tickers and things like that through charts. Um, you know, I have a lot of my own proprietary indicators, but I also have a lot of basic ones like RSI, MACD, you know, five moving average, things like that, um, which a lot of you guys will probably be interested in as well. And we always want to get the current RSI into our data. And I'm going to show you guys how to do that um, to the best of my ability. And uh, so what we're going to do is we're going to need stock pages and we're also going to need a feed. Um, and on our stock pages, this will be like one will be for like Microsoft, one will be for Apple, one will be for Google or whatever stocks that you guys might like. Um, first off, we're going to need some historical data. Uh, I use an API provider. I use Excel price feed. You can copy paste it from Yahoo Finance. Um, there's also a data tab with stocks data here on Excel because um, I think Excel is really starting to take off when it comes to like stock analytics and stuff like that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my configuration pane. I'm just going to do uh, Microsoft and um, go to historical data. I'm just going to do the daily and because um, that's a lot of my data on the sheet that you see i also have like five minute bars on another sheet that i use a timer and things like that for that we can get into uh later on to show you guys how to like time intervals and things like that but anyway um for this example all we want to do is we want to find uh, the last bit of data for our uh indication and it could be whatever indication that you want, but basically the indication will appear on the bottom row. Today's 410, 2023. So that's the last piece of data that we want to get. And when it goes to 411, we want this data. When it goes to 412, we want this data. 413, this data, et cetera. Um, so we're going to first start off is you're going to need um, – some extra room here to that's how we're going to keep it dynamic to where it constantly updates as new data comes in as the days you know trade out and um so you're going to want to make a lot of room down here um i would just go like probably like a full year whatever worth of data um but just to keep it simple uh we'll go down like 50 bars or something um, like I said, I would go down like as far as you can, probably like 250 bars. That way you could have a whole year's worth because once it hits the bottom, the indication won't appear to the top anymore. So you're going to want to make sure there's a lot of room here, but I'm going to keep it at 50 just to make the up and down kind of simple to show you guys. Um, okay, so we got that. And uh, what we're going to want is we're going to need to go to our feed now. Go to the feed. We're going to set up a feed page. Um, and like I said, I did 50 in that one. So I'll do 50 bars in this one. And uh, so that's that. So that would be like Microsoft. And the way, the reason why you want a feed page is because over time, you're going to want to do more stock pages. Like you're going to want to do like Apple and you're going to want to do like Meta and all that kind of stuff. That way you can feed the data through here and it will pop into all your various pages for your stock indication, if that makes any sense. Okay, so all you're gonna wanna do for this part is you're gonna wanna say equals, you just put an equal sign on, on this, um, the very next change below the present. Um, go into the feed, uh, click that, and then you're just gonna wanna slide it all the way down to your pre-planned, predetermined set that you do. Um, they're all gonna be zeros because it says equals C equals feed C53 equals C52. And what that's going to do is when you go to your feed page, and let's just say the price went to 100 and 100 and 100, whatever, it's going to appear here. So it's going to be 100, 100, 100. And that will keep the indication to keep rolling down. Um, that's why it's really important that you have a feed because 
theoretically, this is going to be 411 2023. Um, that hasn't happened yet. And then it'll be like 412, 413, 414, and so on. And um, so that's why that's important. And so you got that all set up. We have everything predetermined, everything like that. And what we're going to want to find is the indication of the bottom row every time, whatever indicator you decide to do. And um, we're and we want it to be dynamic to where when four eleven happens, it'll be here. It'll pull this. When four twelve happens, it'll pull this. When four thirteen happens, it'll pull this. So for this example, we'll keep a simple indicator. We'll just do like a ten moving average. So we'll say equals average for ten bars down. Click that. Boom. Drag that down. And then we're gonna say equals if this is greater than this one negative one i go into like the ifs and all that kind of stuff a little better in my other video um there's also a ton of other content on youtube you guys can look at for if statements because if statements are very important in a lot of this stuff and um as we can see the 10 moving average has been trending up um you can see 250 255 257 260 two, and it just keeps going up every time it's this is higher than this it should be a one if it's lower then it should be a negative one and it'll be red like you see here but see these are all red because obviously zero is less than this and zero is not greater than zero so it's going to be a negative one every time and we want to get rid of all of the part that hasn't happened yet because it's only 410 um, when 411 happens, we want this to appear, but not yet. So a way we're going to do that is this is an if statement of itself. And this is going to be integrated into another if statement. And this will be the value if true. So this is going to be its own entity. Um, I'll parenthesize it off to show you guys. Oops. So this is going to be the value of true in a separate if statement. So you're going to keep the equal sign here right between there. You're going to say equals if quotation if the close. So because every all these closes have already happened, it, it will be there. But it, the closes that haven't happened yet won't be there yet. And what we're going to ask it is if the close is greater than zero, then with a comma, this will be the value of true now, this if statement. And then the value of false, another comma, will be nothing. Keep this code in mind. If the close is greater than zero, then the value of true will be another if statement, which is if um, which is if C12 is greater than C11, then one negative one. You know, is it trending up or is it trending down? Um, and that's the value of true. And if if it's not, then equals nothing, which is just a double quotation mark. And watch what that's going to do is you do that, click the little square, drag it down. It's going to bring you down to the final bar. And as data comes in here, future data, it's going to keep stringing it along. So let's just say we go into the feed and we had 100, 100, 100, whatever. Um, you'll see here it's going to drag it down and that will be lower because obviously that's lower than that okay so as future data comes in um it will keep up with that indication now you still need to be able to find where whatever indication is on the bottom and there is a lot of different ways to do this um there's probably a lot smarter ways than i do it the way i do it is just to, it's simple to me and it's just the way I've been doing it for years. It doesn't, it's, it's not accurate every single time. Sometimes you will have to use like an index match. Sometimes it could be a lot more efficient to use VBA code. But um, as long as it works a couple of times, it will, it's going to consistently work. And it works on like 99% of everything I use um, just by this little uh, strategy here. So what I do is I create a counter so i'm going to create a counter and i just put one and then two because if you put if you put one and you drag it down it's going to give you a bunch of ones but if you put one two and then you highlight them and drag that down it's going to give you a whole count and it's going to count all the way to your last row that's why it's important to give you a lot of room here 
Um, so as future data comes in, it will keep updating and it will keep dragging the bar down. Okay, so what we want to do is we want to find the value of 18 because we want the last row. And so if I put max here equals max, and what max function does is it just finds the highest number, hit control shift down to go all the way to the bottom. It's going to give you 68 because 68 is the highest number in the set. But what we want to find is 18. We don't care about 68. So what we do here, we'll get rid of that. Just keep that out of the way. Is what we want to do is we're going to go here and we're going to say equals if. If the close, once again, is greater than zero. So if data has come in to the close, it'll be, it will be greater than zero. Then the value of true will be our counter and the value of false will be nothing. Double quotation. And then you drag that down, and as you can see, we get 18. That's the number, that's the exact number that we're looking for. Because as new data comes in, so let's just say we added 100 here to Microsoft, now it'll be 19. Because as, as data comes in, that number will keep increasing. And this number is how you're going to find your indication that you want to appear on this page, um, on your little indicator page, whatever. <clears throat> So now that we have that, what I do every time this keeps VLOOKUP way more accurate and everything is I switch these. I know it's a little confusing, but what I do is just click on the whole column, drag that over, you know, shift that. And then I'm going to just going to drag these back over here and I keep this next to the indication. And as new indication comes in, it'll be 19, 20, 21. And now what we want to do is find the max of this column here. So we're going to say equals max. Click on that, control shift down. It's going to highlight all the way to the bottom of your preset. Click enter. It'll be 18. That's the number we're looking for. Now what we want to do is we want to match the highest number with um, our indication. And we use that by using a VLOOKUP. And like I said, you can use index match. You could do like VBA coding. There's a lot of ways to do this. And my ways might not be as, as smart. It might not be as, as efficient to the computer, but it works just fine for mine. Um, I'm going to say equals V look up. And that's a vertical lookup. Parentheses. Now it's going to ask you for a lookup value. Your lookup value is going to be your max, comma. Now you're going to, now it's going to ask you for a table array. Where are you looking up this information? So <clears throat> your, your table array is just going to be these two here, you know, hold shift, keep holding shift, hit control down. It'll highlight all that. Then you're going to do comma. Now it's going to ask you the column index number. So because you highlighted these two, you're looking for, um, however many rows over and that's just one row over so it's going to be one for column index because that's where 18 should be that's telling excel where to find it and it's going to match it with whatever this is so and now you're going to hit comma and it's going to ask you true appropriate match false exact match i just put true and then close the parenthesis and you're done with that so it's going to give you a one so that is going to be our indication here and um, I can show you guys in other videos, maybe the index match, because I have had to use index match for one other time, because sometimes VLOOKUP isn't that dynamic. But if you use ones and negative ones and stuff like that, you really shouldn't have any problems with it. Um, but index match is definitely a better function. It's just, I just do it this way because it's just the way I've been doing it for years and keeps it really simple and VLOOKUP's one of the most basic Excel type formulas out there. Now what's going to happen is as future data comes into here, as future data comes into your feed, uh, let's say a hundred and let's just say, and then it went to 95, then it went to 90, then it went to 85, whatever. This is this example. It's going to be red, 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 because it's now the 10 moving average is trending down. And see what happened is the last time we were at 18, now it counted to 22, and it matched 22. 
with our indication. So now we have a negative one. And now what you can do with this number is you can have your separate page. Like you have like a whole nother page for your indicator. You just hit equals and then boom. And that will be Microsoft here. And then you could do Apple, you know, you could do a whole separate stock page just like this for Apple. And a way you could do that, is you, can copy, you can copy paste this page and just redo the historical data, all that kind of stuff. And um, just being able to place everything where it belongs is kind of important. I can definitely go more into detail about stuff like that because it's not just really that. But the, all, all, all these indicators that I have that pull, I mean, pretty much all of it is based on that VLOOKUP. And that's how I get them to appear here. And I can just show you guys how to do a lot of different things. There's also, this is my daily indicator um, page. I also have a five minute that I run a timer and that will record intervals and things like that. I can go more into depth of that, depending on how this video goes, things like that. Um, you know, if I get any requests, um, I'll do my best to like kind of help you guys uh, because I feel like a lot of us stock geeks, you know, we, we love stocks but we don't always really know how to program and code and things like that. So there's a little bit, I feel like Excel is like a really good middle ground for things like that. And um, I'm trying to think what else I might have left out in the video. I feel like this could be helpful for a lot of people. This actually took me a while to kind of figure out. Um, I kind of like came up with this little thing on my own. Obviously, there's even count functions. So I'll maybe even a lot of these steps I just take are unnecessary, but it's just something to keep it basic for. I feel like a lot of us stock people are pretty like minded and, um, you know, you can use this for a lot of other things as well. A lot of different um, businesses and whatever you want to do. Um, but as you can see here, there's that. Um, so once I get rid of that data, you'll see that now it's a one. I mean, it's always going to be dynamic. It's always going to follow along. Um, and the only t thing I can say is once it passes where you end it off, it's not going to pull the last row anymore. Um, so that's why it's important to make this a lot of room. I usually go out like one year and once a year I'll update it and stuff like that. Um, obviously, if you go to like 10,000 rows, you could, but it, the more you do, the more data it takes because you're obviously going to have, because this is a 10 moving average, you might have like a five moving average and stuff like that. And yeah, so that's just, uh, that's pretty much it for that. Um, like I said, I feel like I'm leaving something out, but let me know if you guys have any questions. Let me know what I could work on, improve on. If you guys have a better way or, or advice on, you know, how I could do this better, even with like VBA and all that kind of stuff, which I'm kind of familiar with. I mean, I, I coded a timer with VBA. That's how I did that. But um, like I said, by no means am I any expert. I'm just a novice that loves stocks and loves analyzing data and trading and all that kind of stuff. And I could easily say a lot of this stuff has helped my trading career out all tremendously. I mean, it's just one of those things to where you can really analyze a lot of things and keep a lot of emotions in check, especially with all the macro and all the different um, things that, you know, swing your brain back and forth. Um, I think it's more important than ever to be a little more algorithmic, systematic, stuff like that in, the, in this kind of market environment because that's just kind of where the market's evolved. And um, you kind of have to adapt or die in the market, as they say. And yeah, so like I said, um, let me know in the comments if, if you have any questions. Um, I'm going to be doing like more different videos on stuff like this. If you want me to go more into depth or things like that, um, definitely let me know. But yeah, I'm going to wrap up the video here. Appreciate you guys watching, especially this far. Uh, happy trading out there and peace out, guys.